So one thing that I feel like is not talked about enough in this industry is how to run a photography and or videography business. Now, don't get me wrong, you can be the best shooter in the world, the best photographer, best videographer, have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear and do very well for yourself. But ultimately, if you do not know how to properly run your business, you're probably not gonna make it very far. And if you do, there's gonna be a lot of headaches along the way. And I wanna use my little platform um, to help educate people and free people from the stresses that I've experienced on my journey. So uh, when I was early on in my career, I started with just a videography contract I found on Google. And I just switched out the names, used it, and thought that that was good enough. Um, and it wasn't until I had uh, a situation with a business and I'm not gonna go into the details of that, but um, ultimately I needed that contract to be uh, used to protect me and my business. And there were a lot of loopholes in it that I should have caught. Um, and ever since then, I said to myself, I was never gonna be put back in that position. A couple months later, I hired on a legal team that helped me create all of the contracts that um, I have now. and. I want to preface that in saying that I didn't create any of these. They were created by actual lawyers in the state of Georgia. But a lot of the stuff that we are going to talk about is not only applicable in Georgia, but also in the other 49 states. So um, another preface and my shameless plug, um, if you don't want to deal with recreating your contracts or adding in these key points that are necessary to protect you and your business, um, I have an Etsy storefront with all of my contracts that were created for me. Um, I've made them into templates where you can go in and add your business name, your names, your client names. Everything's already done for you. Uh, all you got to do is just plug, drop in your name uh, in your business name and you're good to go. They're very reasonably priced and they're on sale right now. So if that's something that interests you, uh, you can click the link down in my bio and go and buy those. But uh, I wanna talk about five things that are very much so necessary, just non-negotiables that you need to have in your contracts. So the first thing that's just a non-negotiable for videography and photography contracts is you wanna iron out all the details. And what I mean by that is you wanna list out every single thing that the client could possibly come back and ask you. Your arrival time, your departure time, the day of the event, um, the location of the event, if it's a wedding, are there multiple locations? The getting ready is here, ceremony is here, pictures are here, reception is here. List out all those different things. List out your turnaround time. How long can they expect to wait before everything has to be delivered? And give yourself enough grace where if you're in the busiest part of your season, um, you know, your typical turnaround time may be three weeks. Give yourself two months just in case SHIT happens, right? The second thing that you wanna make sure you have in your contracts is your payment schedule. You're responsible for paying X amount of dollars total. The payment schedule for this is going to be broken down into three payments. And payment one is due this day, payment two is due this day, payment three is due this day. You're also gonna to wanna to list in there, what if there's late payments? What if clients are late paying? Because that's part of running a business. Do you charge interest? Do you charge a flat fee every single day until the balance is brought current? How do you handle that portion of your business? I also wanna add in that when I was having my final meeting with my lawyer, he did tell me that I needed to take out the word deposit. That was a word that was very common in his, in his scope of work that a lot of creatives use and a lot of businesses use. And for whatever reason, it does not hold up in, this, in, the, um, in the court system. So he instead told me to replace all the words of deposit with retainer. Third thing you wanna make sure that you have listed is cancellations. Now this was really big back in COVID when weddings were just getting canceled left and right, but events still happen. I had a couple cancel their wedding on me um, a couple of days before their wedding uh, last year in 2022. And I had a section in my contract that explicitly ironed out exactly how I handle that process. And it's very much so important because from a couple, uh, I'm speaking very much so from the wedding aspect because that's what my business mostly does, um, but it applies to every other entity of creative work too. From a client or a couple's perspective, the worst has happened. This person got COVID, this person can't, whatever it may be, we gotta cancel the event. First thing they're gonna do, let me come to my vendors and see if we can get money back. 
And from a business owner perspective, you know that you're using this money to pay your bills. You're using this money to invest in your second shooters and, and covering all the other expenses that you have for your business. A lot of us don't have five, 10 grand just laying around that can be refunded when a couple decides or a client decides they wanna cancel last minute. It's important you have this listed so you can be protected so that if this ever does happen, you don't have to worry about trying to dish out a refund. Number four is model release. So all this is saying is that if you happen to make a beautiful uh, viral Instagram reel or TikTok or these beautiful photos and these magazines want to reach out to you and this company's posting you and that company's posting you, this model release is saying that no financial compensation is to be expected to give back to the client because of the work that you create. The last one is a little bit sticky and it's called creative judgment. This is saying that a client cannot reject my work because of taste or any aesthetics from the pictures or the videos. And I think that's really, really important because it's imperative that clients understand what they're receiving when they book with us. And that's something that I'm going to dive into in a separate video. But ultimately, if a client is booking you for you, then they should be booking you for you and the work that you're known to create. Now, prime example where this can get you in some sticky icky trouble if just as a off the wall example if all of the videos and photos that you post are always in black and white and your couple that books you they fall in love with that and they want their wedding video or their wedding pictures to be only in black and white and then you send them pictures in full color well this is not what they were expecting because this is not your previous work so in that instance a judge would be like, well, your all your other work is in black and white and this is in color. So they have the, the, the grounds to reject this work because this is not anything like what you've posted in the past. So a lot of us, especially early on in our career, we're trying to find our style, our aesthetic, our color palette, um, you know, what LUTs we want to use, what presets we want to use and really dial in uh, what we want our business to look like. And you gotta be very careful in that because a client that's booking you today is booking you for your work that they see today. Um, and your style may change a little bit um, in, in the course of a year. So you wanna make sure that you're protected in that. And that creative judgment section is where you do just that. So, so that's five things that I feel like are very much so necessary, just non-negotiables that need to be in your contract. Again, if this is more than you wanna even take on and you just wanna get the contract template and copy exactly what I have, you can definitely do that. The Etsy store link is gonna be right down in the description below. And I appreciate you guys for watching. And until next time, see ya.